to everybody. I'm sure everybody's going to go out and have cookouts and enjoy their afternoon, but I certainly wish everybody a happy Labor Day. You know, looking at the NC State game in review, um, it's certainly disappointing uh, the results that we achieved out there on the field. And you look at it, and we said it from the beginning, we weren't going to make any excuses, but we had an awful lot of mistakes that are mistakes that are cost that cost you football games. Be, I, I thought this team played extremely hard. I don't think we played very smart, and I take ownership to that. I, I think as a head football coach and assistant coaches, that's our responsibility to make sure that we educate our players to mistakes that on mistakes that are going to cost us football games. You can't go on the road and finish minus three in the turnover battle. Uh, you can't go have, we had four pre-snap penalties, and it seemed like offensively we were always trying to get first and 15 rather than first and 10 because of some of the wash yardage plays or some of the pre-snap penalties. Obviously the turnovers I think are the difference in this football game with two drives that were going down that had the potential to put them in the end zone that would have made it a very interesting set second half. Unfortunately, with us putting the ball on the ground and taking points off the board, uh, it got to be a lopsided game, and I don't think that I don't think that we did the things that we need to do. We didn't. Not only did we turn the ball over, but on third down, we weren't near as productive as we need to be. Uh, the field position battle definitely hurt us. But I thought there were some bright, stop, bright spots to come from this game. I thought the team played extremely hard. Uh, I was pleased with the way at, on the offensive side of the ball, the way that Scotty Young played in the first half, and the way that he competed. Uh, with his first time start, I thought that you know, outside of the one fumble, I thought Kenneth Dixon ran extremely hard. Unfortunately, we can't take that fumble back, and it does change the outcome of the game. But I thought he ran extremely hard. He is a very talented player, and that's my first opportunity to see him on game day. But he goes to another level on game day. I mean, he's been impressive at practice, but he goes to a whole other level on game day. I thought. I thought our wide receivers played very well. We didn't have a drop in this football game in the opener, which you always worry about. But I thought the way that uh, Richie Casey, Jakari Jackson, DJ Banks, Sterling Griffin, the outside guys, I thought the way that Andrew Gilliatt, um, Hunter Lee, a lot of those guys competed in, inside. Uh, Greenwald, I thought they really did a nice job when given the opportunity to make a play on the ball. I thought they did some good things. But there's certainly a lot of plays left to be had out there on the field. Uh, we, we left some plays offensively, whether it be because of a poor read, a poor throw, or just execution type things that we've got to get better as an offensive football team. Defensively, I was very encouraged with the uh, with the play of the defensive front. I thought the defensive line uh, played like we thought that they would play with the maturity and experience there. I thought IKN and Polly had an excellent game. I thought Justin Ellis, uh, Shaq Lucas, uh, Kendrick James. I thought a lot of those guys really played well. Dora, Monteris Dora, I thought had a great football game. It seemed like they were running at IK early, and one of their halftime adjustments was to run the other. Way, uh, and I thought I, I thought uh, Dora had an excellent second half uh, when put at the point of attack. But I thought our defensive line played very solid. Uh, our linebackers, I thought Daniel Cobb was a great addition. You look out there, and Daniel Cobb and Mitch Villamez are playing their first football game for Louisiana Tech. Uh, I thought they did a nice job out there. Daniel Cobb was very active, was all over the field. Uh, Mitch had I think five tackles and four assists as well. Uh, but we're not as consistent as we need to be. I thought they were active. They were a breath of fresh air, but we're not as consistent as we need to be. When you look at that game, we gave up 500 and 50 yards of offense in that game, which is an awful lot of offense, but in 77 plays, I think we gave up about 270 yards in 77 plays. The thing that was the killer for us defensively were the big plays. We gave up 10 plays for 259 yards uh, in that football game. 259 yards and just big play passes, big play runs, and when you sit down and watch the film, the encouraging thing, defensively, we feel like we can get better. I mean, we gave up inside leverage and man coverage on the long touchdown. We've, we're supposed to have a free safety in the middle of the field playing man free. He bites up on the run fake. I think a lot of those things are correctable and we're going to have to get better as a defensive football team. I did not think, well, I thought that 
Logan McPherson punted the ball like a true freshman, or kicked the ball like a true freshman. I thought the opening kickoff was kind of like, uh, well, that's one of the things that you're concerned about when the first kick goes, the first kick to start the 2013 season goes out of bounds. It's not exactly what we had practiced for. Uh, and so I, I thought he kicked the ball um, probably not as not at his best, and I think he's capable of much better. He averaged, I think, about 36 yards a punt, and I know that he's better than that because when you chart about 300 punts through the course of the camp. I mean, he's been up over 40 yards, and so I will hope that uh, some of the jitters being gone and he can feel a little bit more comfortable and his talents can come to light on some of the things that we've seen on the practice field. Another bright spot I thought was the way we covered. We went against a return man that was averaging 9.3 yards a carry uh, return a year ago. Uh, held him to three, three yards a return. Thought the cover teams did an excellent job, and that's always one of the things that I talked about. One of my concerns going in was the kicking game. But I thought the kicking game uh, really did really did a nice job. And when you look at the overall aspect of the game, uh, we didn't go for a moral victory. We didn't go just to gain experience. We went up there to win the football game, and we weren't able to get that done. And from that standpoint, it's disappointing, but I am encouraged because most of the mistakes that I see on the field are not talent-oriented. They're things that we can get corrected, uh, which we're going to have to going into this week's game leading into Lamar. Lamar is a very young program, but it's certainly not one that we are taking lightly. When you look at six FCS teams beat FBS teams last week, and you look at the manner in which they did it, and you look at Lamar coming off a 75 to nothing victory last week. I, 75 points is a lot to score on air. I mean, we still have to pitch it, catch it, throw it, block it, and execute. And to score 75 points, uh, I just think shows how far this program has gone. I think mean, Ray Woodard does an excellent job as a football coach when you watch him. Uh, he played defensive line. His background is on defense. He played defensive line at Texas. He played in the NFL for five years. Obviously, he's very aware of schemes and what to do, and he's a very sound, fundamental football coach. He's been a high school coach in Texas. He was a junior college coach in Texas, and now he's the head coach of Lamar. I think that junior college experience has really helped him because as a young program, they have an awful lot of upperclassmen that have come, whether it be through transfer or junior college, and I think they're a very talented football team. When you look at them uh, defensively, they're a 3-4 defense, which is a totally different look than what we've been able to see all camp. We're going to really need a great look this week from our scout teams to start to get acclimated to this look. They've got their four top returning tacklers are back. Very active uh, defense line. You look at the nose guard, he's 6'6", 295 pounds. He's a transfer from Oklahoma State. Uh, very talented uh, defensive line. I think their linebackers are very active in the 3-4 system. That's who you ask to make a lot of the plays with a lot of the movement and confusion and trying to get a short edge outnumbered, uh, which I think they do a nice job of, and I think their secondary is very talented. So when you look at it, I think it's a, uh, I think they are improving and getting better every week, and I don't think it's a game that we can take lightly as a defense. I don't think you can take any game lightly when they just scored 70, 75 points. Really like their quarterback, very quick release. Uh, they don't ask him to hold the ball long, throw it way down the field. They get it out of his hands in a hurry. A lot of bubble screens, now screens, things like that. Uh, they return four starters on their offensive line. They've got a big physical running back, and they have two transfer uh, receivers, one from Oklahoma State who was a uh, a third team All American last year, and a big, <clears throat> excuse me, a big six three wide receiver who is a transfer. Excuse me, who is a transfer from Houston? Uh, they have their punter, their kicker, their deep snapper, their holder are all like three year lettermen. Uh, they're all seniors. They have a lot of maturity there. Their punter averaged 47 yards a punt last week. Uh, very talented punter. Um, this is a game that we're taking we're taking very serious, especially in the light of when you look at the way we played last week with the mistakes that we made and with the way that Lamar played at 75 nothing with so many 
many experienced players returning. So uh, for us, the expression that you make the best uh, best progress from week one to week two, uh, I'm certainly am hopeful of for this football team as we move forward. And that's what we've got to go out to practice this week. We've got to work hard on those things. We had a long team meeting last night uh, just to talk a little bit about the things that we've got to do, but most of the mistakes that we had are correctable, and we've just got to do a better job of coaching them. What questions could I answer for anybody? Addressing the fumbles, I, I, I guess how would you go about fixing that, or is that just kind of like a flu thing, a little bit of bad luck? I think the coaching in you won't allow you to say it's bad luck, but you know, going into that game, we had a lot of we had a lot of. Um, I'm not going to say concerns, but there was a lot of question marks going into that game. Your quarterback hadn't taken a snap. Uh, you've got four new starters on the offensive line. You're new at linebacker. You don't have anybody that's played for you or any game film. You're new in the second and the back end. A lot of question marks going into that game. Experience at tailback was not one of them. And when you watch your films from a year ago, that's very uncharacteristic of both of them. And yet we put the ball on the ground three times, and two of them take points off the board. Uh, like I said, if you were able to push those two games, those two touchdowns in and not drop them, and it's 21 24 at halftime, and you're in a heck of a game, and that's even with four pre snap penalties and lining up offsides and corner on a third and five stop. You know, some of those mistakes that. Those are just, those are the things that we've got to be able to eliminate. So I don't think we can just say it was a fluke.